As you can tell, I've moved, but I'm still here to give you the news. Let's talk. What up, viewers? What up, what up? Calc Soups here, and today is Friday, March 11th, and that means it's time for a quick recap of the week in video game news. Starting off, or the big thing this week was PlayStation's latest state of play. Um, their Nintendo Direct style uh, showcases, and there was quite a lot packed into 20 minutes. Um, the kind of one of the big highlights was Exo Primal, which is a Capcom dinosaur mech fighting game. Um, for some reason, there are dinosaur rifts being opened up, and dinosaurs are flooding out, and you fight them as Anthem style mech suits. Um, that's about what I saw. Uh, it seems like it's a little bit of a hero shooter. You can have multiple of the same classes, so you don't have to worry about like team structure. Uh, and yeah, you get to run around and shoot and destroy dinosaurs. So um, looks like it's a little bit of a response to Anthem. It looks like it's a little bit of a response to Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, but in all, it looks like a pretty fun co-op uh, combat game. So. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting, so that's why I'm talking about it. Next, they kind of showed the Ghostwire Tokyo. They showed a little bit more gameplay, and one of the reviews I saw for Ghostwire Tokyo was saying that it's not necessarily, or it lean doesn't lean very far into the horror genre, even though that's what I think people were originally expecting. It has a lot of like horror bad guys, but it really turns into like a kind of action RPG. Uh, you have all these kind of like magic powers and you're using them to defeat enemies. So uh, we did ha get a sense of this last month when they were talking about Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, but this kind of like cemented it and I saw a review about it this week kind of mentioning that. So yeah, it's a little bit less horror, but it really looks like a pretty cool action uh, action game, first person magic shooter game. So uh, that was fun to check out as well. Uh, one of the thing, big pieces of news coming out of it was Forspoken has been delayed out of May. Uh, it is now launching on October 11th, so uh, quite a big shift, but uh, hopefully people get a better, speaking of action RPGs, hopefully people get a better uh, sense of the game and better game for uh, it being shifted. Uh, lots of games are being delayed right now, especially with the current state of the world, so uh, nothing too, probably too, nothing too much to worry about there. Um, Square Enix is probably th rethinking a lot of their slate given uh, their misses for the past couple of titles. So hopefully, for Sp for Spoken is a uh, is a good game, a uh, better game for the delay. Uh, another small indie game that I saw, I forget what it was called, but it it was a small um, looked like multiplayer game. It looked like an asymmetrical game where. I think three people were fighting against one person and it was like a kaiju battle kind of system. So it looked like a pretty fun brawler game. I forgot the name of the game, but uh, definitely caught my eye and something I will continue. To, I'll have to look up after this and continue to uh, follow going forward. But it was only on the screen for like 20 seconds. So blink then you might have missed it, but uh, it did look pretty fun. Uh, and last, the final thing that I wanted to talk about coming out of the state of play was the, all the DLC content coming to Returnal. Um, on March 22nd, there will be a there will be a big update to Returnal. I believe it's like the 3.0 update or something like that, and uh, or 1.3, something like that. There's a three involved. Uh, anyway, it has a co-op campaign, so you can play through the campaign on co-op, which is very good for people like me who suck at roguelike games. Um, and I'm hoping that hopefully someone can carry me through uh, the co-op campaign or potentially. Uh, play it co-op if it goes to PS Plus with my wife. That'd be a pretty fun game to play with someone special. Um, there's also an infinite horde mode kind of coming up. I, I would uh, I would assume as much, considering most roguelikes tend to have a really good kind of uh, infinite gameplay loop. Uh, so if you wanted to play until you die, if you have a really good cool build, uh, this allows for that. Uh, I think it was like a Sisyphean, it said like Sisyphean update. So. Uh, you can keep climbing that hill and trying to keep getting that number higher and higher in the infinite mode coming out. So uh, I'm more excited for the co-op mode, but I know that a lot of people who play roguelikes or roguelites uh, like to play uh, those infinite kind of horde modes. So looking forward to uh, seeing what those are all about. That was kind of the big highlights from State of Play. There was a couple of the games 
um, like Valkyrie Reborn, something like that, um, that kind of caught my eye. But uh, those were the kind of the games that I highlighted and I thought looked uh, cool to me. Let me know if you think I missed any or what other big exciting games coming out of State of Play you think I should check out. Uh, next big update for the week was Overwatch 2. Got a lot more information. There was a small four-minute dev update um, talking about how they were sorry that they've kind of let Overwatch dry up, considering there hasn't been a lot of content in the last year or so coming to Overwatch. Um, and they kind of explained something that is typical for the uh, industry in that a lot of their devs went from live development to developing the new game, which would you totally expect in the games industry. Once you kind of uh, once you kind of shift focus, that you lose a lot of the people who would be um, who would be working on the kind of live content as they're building out this sequel. Um, and they apologized for the fact that there hasn't been a lot of Overwatch content coming out. Um, they also talked a little bit about, or they, the, one of the big things, after apologizing for that, one of the big things they talked about was how they're trying to get Overwatch 2 out to us as quickly as possible. And because of that, um, they are separating the PvP from the PvE modes. Um, so the, uh, the PvP mode will be coming out quicker and sooner for us to play. Uh, game a part that I'm really excited for because I kind of missed the boat on Overwatch 1. Um, but I was also looking forward to the PvE mode, so the fact that that isn't there um, is a little bit upsetting. And I've kind of noticed a trend that, uh, you know, I don't think, uh, hopefully the industry kind of has a little bit of backlash to this because, and by a little bit, I mean a very little bit of, of like small yelling on, on Twitter or something like that, but releasing un, unfinished games, um, I mean, uh, like that, uh, I just, I think that that is, that's pretty uncool. Um, you know, the fact that we're not getting Halo launched its campaign without the co-op. Um, Call of Duty games are releasing without their campaigns. Um, so just the whole, P a lot of these PvP games think that they can launch uh, without the PvE modes that they promised. Um, I think is is kind of a letdown. And it, it just seems, I can understand why it's easier to develop a PvP portion um, a little bit. Uh, just, you know, if it's already been built on the foundation of Overwatch 1. Um, but I'm looking forward to kind of getting the PvP and the PvE at the same time. Um, but I'll, I'll probably get pulled into PvP anyway, uh, just because uh, I think there will be a lot of friendly hype around that. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a little, it's a little shitty that um, they're separating the two modes. And, I, yeah, the industry just not releasing both at the same time is starting to get a little frustrating. And just a, a small pattern that I've noticed. So uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Um, Gotham Knights, a game uh, that I've been excited for for quite some time, um, has finally got a release date. Uh, it's coming out October 25th, so just in time for Halloween. Uh, so I can get myself and three other friends together to play as the Bat family through Gotham Knights. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. I think... We need more kind of co-op action RPG games, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to, especially after watching The Batman this week, uh, I'm pretty excited to kind of dive into Gotham and punch some bad guys and level up my characters. So uh, looking forward to that, and uh, excited to see Gotham Knights has a firm release date for October. Hopefully that holds strong. Uh, the King of February has been announced. February was quite, February of 2022 was quite a stacked month for releases. From the beginning of the month with Sifu and Dying Light 2 all the way to the end of the month with Destiny uh, Destiny 2 and Elden Ring uh, with Horizon Zero Dawn and Sifu and Total War Warhammer 3 in there all mixed up. Um, and according to NPD's latest release, uh, Elden Ring uh, is the top selling game, uh, US only, uh, the top selling game for the month of February as well as for the year so far. So. Uh, pretty exciting to see if that was only two days worth of data um, But PlayStation also released their top downloads for the month of February and that already had Elden Ring above uh, Horizon Forbidden West so uh, That was already a pretty pretty significant sign there um, But yeah, I'm glad to see that Elden Ring is selling as well as uh, it, as much as it's being talked about uh, Continuing to, to I continue to flag every guy that I see 
Uh, I haven't been able to play much, but I am excited to continue to dive into Elden Ring and glad that it's kind of on the top. Uh, good to see that from software um, kind of doing these wins because uh, I think sometimes they're, they're seen as kind of niche, niche games and uh, this one's kind of broken the mold a little bit. So excited for that. Um, the games industry has done a lot this week uh, to combat uh, you know, quite a lot of things, uh, one of which is uh, to show support to the Ukraine um, and to levy kind of sanctions against Russia. Um, so companies like, uh, we talked a little bit about this last week with Microsoft levying kind of some sanctions, um, but uh, in support of the Ukrainian front, uh, companies like Activision and Epic, Sony, Humble Bundle, Bungie, uh, and uh, Pokemon Go have all uh, decided or, or are working against Russia and not selling content to in that country. So uh, not only are there other governmental sanctions against them, but they also can't get their hands on uh, any fun new games from quite, quite a lot of big companies. So um, good to see that the kind of games industry is taking a stand and uh, putting some money where their mouth is. Uh, considering Russia is probably one of the top 10 countries that uh, that a lot of these companies sell to. So uh, this is a pretty big deal for them to to drop, uh, you know, a pretty big country, a pretty big territory from their sales list. But uh, I think it's for a good cause. So uh, glad to see that. Gaming has also taken a stand against the new Texas legislation for the Don't Say Gay bill. Uh, because of it, big companies like EA, Microsoft, and Gearbox are saying uh, are, are saying they're not going to sell in Texas um, and that uh, you know that uh, diversity and and um, you know and that gaming is for everyone uh, which is a pretty good message to get behind um, that diversity matters and that uh, if we can all play together then that's all then that's better for us um, so really cool to see these kind of big companies come out uh, against this uh, pretty harsh bill uh, that um, I think will be used to t target uh, people, uh, you know, people in the LGBTQ community. So uh, pretty good to see that uh, some big companies, some big gaming companies are um, working against that. Um, and also, uh, if you want to support the UK Ukrainian effort and also get your hands on some games for pretty cheap, um, itch.io has a Ukrainian bundle with 500 games in it, all for $10. Um, so pretty easy to give $10. Uh, you should probably be giving more if you can, but um, if you want to get some pretty good games uh, and you want uh, for a low, low price and you want to help show your support for Ukraine and what's going on over there, uh, you can you can uh, buy the most recent itch.io bundle and I'll have a link down below where you can do that. So hopefully, uh, Hopefully, uh, lots of people get their hands on that. Moving right along, the uh, GOG has a pretty cool sale this week for female leads, which I thought was a pretty cool category to have some pretty deep discounts on. Uh, I think some of these were like up to 90% off, so pretty good deal on games like Hellblade Send You a Sacrifice, which is one of my favorite games, um, and Control, which uh, I played last year uh, for one of my friend zones. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for both of those games. Uh, there was a couple others on there, uh, but those were the two that kind of caught my eye. So pretty good games that you should probably get your hands on, um, all with very strong female leads. So uh, feel free to check those out down below. All is not lost for Skull and Bones, Ubisoft's pirate caught ship combat game that has been talked about and been delayed for quite some time. But we got a little heartbeat of life this week. Uh, with them, look with Ubisoft is looking for testers for Skull and Bones. So they're obviously in a phase where they need people to be playing the game um, in order for them to put it out. I don't know whether or not that means something like this year or next year, but fingers crossed that we will get Skull and Bones sometime soon. Uh, as uh, I think a lot of people kind of wanted this ship combat game um, that's been teased to us since Assassin's Creed 4 uh, Black Flag. So uh, I think people have been wanting this and uh and uh hopefully with there's a new breath of life and they can get some testers to uh, squash some bugs and we'll see that game sometime soon last but not least for the week the a god of war tv show uh the live action tv show is being eyed by amazon to jump onto their uh prime uh platform 
so you can watch the new God of War series on Prime. Um, so I don't remember if there was a price tag associated with this, but pretty cool to see. I know Amazon's been kind of buying up a lot of the gaming IP. Um, I think they're probably in, in contention with Netflix for a lot of the gaming IP TV shows that are coming out. Um, so excited to see God of War, uh, especially after the big hit that was God of War 2018. And I assume Ragnarok's also going to be uh, a bomb this year. So uh, I'm looking forward to God of War Ragnarok this year and potentially a live action God of War TV series coming to Amazon Prime. So fingers crossed. And maybe this circles back to Dwayne The Rock Johnson being in a uh, live action adaptation of a video game show. I think a lot of people speculated that it would be God of War. Um, and we haven't confirmed what that is, and he hasn't spoken out about it since. Um, but hopefully, we can, maybe uh, I could see Dwayne. I could see Dwayne Johnson as uh, as Kratos. Um, I wonder who'd play Atreus. Probably just some young, some new young actor. But uh, it could be fun to see. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see a God of War TV series uh, coming out, especially to Amazon Prime, because I think they have a lot of really good content on their uh, platform as well. But that's it for the week. If you feel like I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment down below and we can talk all things video games and news down there. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, follow, like, and subscribe to me on YouTube and Twitch so you can see more great content like this. I'll have links down below in the description. Thanks again. I hope you have a super day. I hope you have a super weekend. And I hope you have a super day. Bye!